This is Andy Purawal for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I am delighted to be joined by Olympic bronze medalist and now turned professional Fraser Clark over Zoom. Fraser, firstly, as I've just said, Happy New Year. I hope you had a good one and a good Christmas. Did you get up to much? No, not a lot. You know, I didn't um, break up from the gym till the 24th and then I was back in here on the 27th, which I did, I sort of didn't like at the time, but now. You know, it's probably the first Christmas in about 12 years I've actually got it bang on right. So it was well needed, you know what I mean? What did you get up to over a festive period, mate? I've got two two um, little kids, Anna. So, you know, there's a lot of, like, went and met Santa and, and this and that. And then, obviously, everyone knows, like, where I'm from. Yeah. Christmas, you go down the pub, play darts, play pool, <laughs> have a laugh. You know what I mean? That, that's, that's what I got up to. Not a lot, really. Nothing exciting, but, you know, it was all family and uh, I had a lovely time. Fraser, I'm glad to hear you had a good time. You was able to switch off somewhat. Um, just to quickly recap, we haven't had a chance to speak since your success at the Olympics last summer, coming back with that bronze medal now. Um, a bit of time to reflect. How would you look back on, upon it all now, Fraser? Yeah, do you know what? It's, it's one of the things. It's been, been a while now, but when I do look back on it now, I'm, I'm proud of my achievement. You know, um, some everyone has an opinion on it. Some people, you know... Some people love it, some people aren't interested. But for me, I, I always say, you know, for the rest of my life, I'm, I'm going to have to do something pretty good, you know, to compare to, to that feeling. Um, that time there was unbelievable for myself. Um, to be with my friends, winning medals, you know, representing the country, it was it was unbelievable. And like I say, uh, memories forever. Honest God, uh, one of the best periods of my life with, with amazing people. Um, I'm very proud um, of that achievement. And, you know, years to come, they can never take that away from me. Fraser, you move now into the pro ranks. There's been a lot of kind of, you know, excitement about this current crop of Olympians and a lot of people waiting to see what moves they make, who they signed with in a management management sense, who they go with in a promoter sense. And of course, when everybody makes their debut, yours is coming around now, February 19th on the Calm Brook card. Fraser, um, why now? What, why have you obviously felt that like this is the right time to make your professional debut? Well, according to everyone in the world, I shouldn't be making it. I'm ancient. I should retire. I'm 30. It's over. Boxing's over for me. Load of rubbish. Um, the time is now. Do you know what I mean? I set out when I started in the amateurs. You know, I wanted to go to the Olympic Games. It took me it took me a long time, but I persisted, and uh, you know, I got to where I wanted to go. So the, the the general the next step naturally is going to professional game. It's something that I've, I've always loved. You know, you go to any show in the last 10 years. Usually you'd see me there either working or watching one of the two. So, you know, it's what I love. It's my passion. Um, I feel like I have something to offer the pro game. I know, I know my targets. I know my goals. And um, when I look out there, you know, there's, there's no reason why if if these people at the top, Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua and anyone else, you know, if they got to the top, there's no reason I can't do it. There's no reason at all because, you know, I know my level. I'm, um, I believe in myself and I'm willing to put the work in. So why not? Fraser, has it been frustrating when you've seen comments of people saying you're maybe a little bit older than what people would have liked to have seen you turn over? Uh, you know, it's a surprising comment, which I see as well, because we've seen how Joe Joyce's career has gone um, from, the last, from the last heavyweight to turn over. So is it a surprise to you to see that? No, it's not a surprise. And, you know, I, I half get it because boxing people are, are very, um, you know, everyone's going on the way boxing used to be. You know, it used to be, you turn pro early, you know, you do, you do, you, you learn in there. I had the, I had the honour and the pleasure and the privilege of, of doing a lot of my learning on the international amateur scene around the world, different countries, different fighters have boxed a lot of good names. So I understand what people say, but 30 year old now is not a 30 year old 10 or 15 years ago or 20 years ago. You know, we, we have sports science now, we're looked after better. Um, I don't feel 30 if, if that's a way that you can feel. I feel good. I feel like I'm getting better. Uh, and Joe Joyce is a prime example of you. You know, um, 30 is the new 25. Is that the plan for you in terms of, you know, a kind of a, when you look at the pro careers of a heavyweight, is he somebody who you want to follow? Not in terms of his, the careers had, but the, the path in terms of how quickly he's progressed through the ranks and now he's very much sat there waiting for his own crack at a world heavyweight title? You know, I think Joe's progressed perfectly. He's done really well. Um, but like I say, you know, and everyone in boxing knows this is a very individual sport. Um, all we learn, we'll know after the 19th, won't we? We'll know how I'm going to progress after the first one and we'll keep learning. 
Um, I've got my own pace. Like I say, there's people talk about rush. I've got no no rush in me at all. I don't need to rush. Um, I take my time. I do things the right way. You know, since the Olympics to now, I've, I've ended up getting a great team around me, which, I, which I'm very fortunate to have. There are people that have been in boxing, people that know boxing, and we'll move at the pace we feel comfortable at. You know, whether that's faster than normal or slower. It, I, I can't see it being slower than anyone else, but it might not be. Might not be a sprint. Won't be a walk. I imagine it'll be somewhere in between, and we'll do it the right way. Do you have a time time frame in place as to when you'd like to be looking at that world scene? I know as as we very early yet, you know, you haven't actually made your pro debut yet, but I'm sure it's something you thought about. Yeah, of course it is. You know, if if, if, if I could have been, if I got, if I think about a world champion, I would have been a world champion three years ago. But you know, realistically, I've not thrown a punch yet as a pro. So, like I say, I'll take my time, um, develop the right way, get the experience in. People talk about, you know, oh, he's very experienced, but he's been in the Olympics, he's been around for a long time. The pro boxing is a different game. I, I know I've got a lot of new skills to learn, a lot of experiences to, to gain, and um, I'm looking forward to doing it. Making your debut on the Khan Brook card as well, it couldn't be a bigger event for yourself. You know, all eyes will be watching you, whether people think it's a, a dated fight, which could have happened years ago or not, it's still generating a huge amount of interest for yourself. How key is that for your pro debut to block box on a card like that? Yeah, you know, I think I'm, I'll, I'll be there with my popcorn as well, wanting to watch it. You know, these, I think I've got a bit of a, it's a bit of a special place to make my debut, to be honest. It's in Manchester, obviously I'm a Manchester United fan. Um, I love Manchester as a place, one of my favourite cities. And then we have the mix-up of, you know, Kel Brook, he's a, he's a Sheffield legend. I've, I've been in Sheffield for 12 years. I've seen the buzz. I've seen the big nights in Sheffield behind Kel Brook. And Mia Khan, one of the reasons I started boxing, uh, you know, seeing him win that Olympic medal 2004. That was that was a massive inspiration for me. So I've got a bit of a connection to both both fighters. You know what I mean, uh, I um, I boxed internationally with Amir's brother Haroon. Obviously, I, it's just it's just a great fight for me. You know, uh, people talk about being too late. If you look at, I've just been watching on the socials and stuff. These guys are really putting the work in. They're both looking fantastic shape. So yeah, it, I would be like to see it a couple of years ago. Of course, I would. There's no doubt about it. But you know, if you ask these two guys, they don't like each other. They're taking it serious and. You don't you don't usually get that genuine you know dislike between two fighters and uh, I'm glad I'm glad this happened and I'm glad to be on the card. Who are you picking? Oh, you know what? Everyone keeps asking me this question and put me in a spot. I said earlier, I, I think timing beats speed personally, and I know that that you know uh, Kelbrook he can really dig, um, but Amir Khan, you know, he's been in such big fights, um, probably probably harder and bigger fights than Kel to be fair. It's hard to pick. I'm gonna go with Cal. Stick with my gut. Stick with stick with the Sheffield side of things. You know, I'm I'm hot, but I'm a kind of adopted Sheffield lad. So you know, I'll uh, I'll go with Cal. Fraser, also just on the training front, I know you're working with Angel Fernandez. What made you take that that decision and make the choice to work with Angel? Yeah, you know, I think it was it was time for a change for me after being in Sheffield for so long. Um, after after doing a little bit with Angel, probably once a week for the last year. And seeing him train Richard Riappol, seeing how in, de in depth he is with his training, um, young, enthusiastic, and he trains at this fantastic facility of Loughborough University. Um, it was quite an easy decision. You know, once, once I'd seen the way he works with his fighters, and I thought, you know what, I need a bit of that. So, you know, he's young, he's enthusiastic. We're, we're learning together. Um, but, he's, you know, he's a, he's a boxing man through and through. He, um, he eats, sleeps and breathes boxing. So that, they're the kind of people you need to be around. And for as well, I've got you, of course, I want to touch on some heavyweight talk. It would be rude not to. Um, obviously, yeah. just to start off with Tyson Fury and Dillian Moore, I'm sure you saw the whole 80-20 per split and what have you. Um, I saw Eddie's comments about they'll be challenging that and uh, you know, looking to appeal against that. Just on your, your thoughts, though, what do you make if Tyson and Dillian were to square off in the near future? I mean, on, on the 80-20 the thing, so well out, well out of my uh, my brain rage. I'm I'm not a business, I'm not a businessman. I'm a uh, I'm a fighter. So I, that's I don't. It sounds unfair, doesn't it? But I don't know the ins and outs to be honest. So I won't comment. But on a fighting point of view, you, you have to make Tyson Fury the big favourite, surely. But um, you know I've um, I've, I've, I've I've sparred with Dylan White before, and that left up whistled by my face, and I'm glad it whistled by my face and didn't catch me on the chin because. It might have knocked me into next year. Um, so, you know, you never know um, with Dylan. He's sort of, you know, he's one of them men. He can be a lot of people's bogeyman. Um, good fight. 
entertaining fight. The build-up will be unbelievable. Um, I hope it happens, and I hope they sort you know the money situation out and you know it gets done. These these are the fights we want to see. I'm a boxing fan, not just a boxer. I'm a fan, so I want to see Tyson Fury and Dillon White get it on. And touch on AJ as well, obviously the man who you've signed to under two five eight. Um, first of you know, there's a lot of talk about his current training situation. You know, whether he's still with Rob or he's looking elsewhere. We know that he went and spoke to some trainers out in America. For somebody who's worked with Rob yourself, I just wanted to get your take on you know those rumors, those reports that he's looked at other trainers, and if we may well see him go down a different route. Yeah, first of all, um, Rob McCracken, you know what he's done in boxing speaks for itself, and his regard is one of the best trainers in the world, and that ultimate respect for him, you know. Um, through my career, and I'm sure still now, whether Joshua works with him or not, he's, he's sort of a, a father figure to us both, and uh, we, we'll always look up to him. Whether they work together or not, this is a, a professional sport, and, um, you know, I think they both understand how, how the sport works. You know, sometimes change is needed, sometimes it's not, and these are the decisions that you have to make as, as being in the position AJ's in, you know, former world champion, um, massive responsibility, massive job on his hands, he wants to get his titles back, I'm sure he'll do what he thinks best to get them titles back. And me knowing knowing Rob McCracken, um, I'm sure he, you know he will give Joshua his blessing and just want him to get them titles back. Um, whatever situation Joshua chooses, you know, as long as he chooses it and goes in with it 100 with his heart, and he can sleep well at night, you know, and he's done that. That's all we have to do. Grazer, just two more from me. Just one more on AJ with regards to that Usyk rematch. Is it as simple as Anthony needs to be more aggressive in, in the rematch as opposed to you know, the style he outlaid in the first one, looking to box against the man who many consider one of the best boxing talents in the sport? No, nah, be, 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 just being aggressive. That, that's not enough. Anyone can be aggressive. You, you know, aggression is, is something we've all got inside of us. Um, there's a lot more to work on than just aggression. And like I say, these... You know, people like uh, Anthony is not, he's not, he's not daft at all. He knows that. He knows if he goes in there just aggressive, this, these people are, are scientists of boxing. Usyk and the trainer, and they're, they're, they're absolute geniuses and scientists. So aggression isn't just going to beat this guy. You need a little bit more than that. You got to use this a little bit more, be a bit smart, a bit cute. There's got to be aggression in there, definitely. Um, but yeah, there's aggression. We've all got that. We can all, we can all go out there and throw that about. It's going to take a lot more than that. And he knows it, and that's why, hence, you know, there's a long decision on who's going to train him, what he's going to do. This is all being thought of, you know, proper 100% dedication to this job. The next job for Anthony is to beat uh, Usyk and, you know, whatever's needed to do that. I'm sure he's, uh, he's in the process of uh, sorting it out. And final one, Fraser, we saw Eddie Hearn say he wouldn't mind seeing Deontay Wilder and Derek Chisora take place. He's had a mixed reaction uh, over social media. What's your thoughts? Would you be interested to see that one? I mean, I'd always be interested. You know, anytime Derek gets in the ring, I'm interested because he's. I was there on the uh, December the 18th. He's absolute value for money. Credit to boxing. You know, one. It's an entertaining sport. That's what it's about. This sport's about entertaining. If you've ever seen Derek Chisora in the ring and not entertain, then uh, you know that's what he does. Does he need to box Wilder? He, he Derek can get in there and give anyone a hard night's work. I think you know coming to the back end of his career. It's a massive fight, you know, when we think about money. I know Derek, Derek's a family man. He's got two, I think he's got two beautiful children. Yep. You know, he, he doesn't need that fight, but it's up to him ultimately. You know, when you're in this game, it comes from you, you're the man that makes the decision because you're the man taking the punches and giving the punches. Would, would I like to see it from a, from a, from a uh, supporter's point of view? Yes, of course I would, as a fan. I'd, but I don't think it really needs to be done. Right. There's all the fights out there for him. There's all the fights out there, big fights. Fraser, we'll leave that there now because I know I've just hit my time limit and you've got other people to speak to. So I appreciate your time. I look forward to seeing your pro debut. And thank you for speaking to me in Boxing Social. No worries. Take care. <laughs>